Bobby and Benjamin. Yes. How was she? Cool. Very awesome. Very Pretty quiet. I expected more bang and flashing. Mm. Yeah. Kind of like the kind of projects I work on. <laughs> All that time. Nice. Our door uh, held up. Yeah, yeah, the door uh, stayed on. Yeah. Hey, Ben. <laughs> door stayed on. The engine stayed on. Thank God. What was that, Benjamin? First time I hear the radial engine run. <laughs> Even in the sky, I never heard one. Oh. Always turbine, uh, turbine uh, engines. Holy oh, smokes, changing yeah. the world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, it was just amazing. The last time I flew in her was uh, 1984. And I uh, never heard her again oh, since good. today. It's very nice to hear. Very nice to hear, see her alive again. Uh, it's making a lot of noise, but uh, it's, a, it's a good sound. Yes. What do you think? I'm happy. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a great achievement. And uh, yes, uh, as I've already told everyone uh, who work on this aircraft, has to be proud of, uh, of this. Uh, the next step is uh, to fly now. 10 4. It's good. Good to hear it run. What's on the jacket for tomorrow? Put, uh, start putting the tail on. Put the elevators on, the rudders. Sorry, the elevators and the rudder. And uh, pull some oil screens. Some checks. Is Desi allowed to go home now? Well, I wish he could stay, but I think he, I think we're gonna lose him now. He, uh, he got his, he got his ears full of engines running, so he's happy. He can, he can head for Dodge now. Today's May 8th, 2019, and this is episode 127 of Plane Savers! So Steve, you heading home? Heading home, we got a lot of editing to do. <laughs> so what, uh, what, uh, what's your time frame on uh, your episode? Well, I'm go my goal is to get it out tomorrow night, Thursday night, so. And then you want to tell everybody what's happening uh, for the big June 6th? Big June 6th is D-Day, so I'm going to come back and hopefully help uh, film the process of flying this thing. Cool, is it going to be part of one of your episodes? Oh yeah, man, oh, yeah. there we go. So that'd be nice, so you guys can get like, I think the plan right now is we're going to shoot a live version with a broadcaster, like a broadcaster toy, go full live. Uh, I'm going to do my regular episode and we can get a Flight Chops episode, so be well covered. Well covered, yeah man. It's a Huge thing you got done here. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, Michael, right. thanks for running. You guys have a safe flight. Good luck, Mikey. Au revoir. See you later. Wow. So, huge thank you for uh, to Flight Chops, who's just leaving. Uh, again, number one Canadian aviation YouTuber. I uh, wish I could spend more time with him, but uh, I think I was here till about 8 to 8.30 editing, making sure I got that episode out for you guys last night. Uh, yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, and But... Uh, with all good things, they shall continue. Bobby. <laughs> the school had a tool sale today. Yes, I heard. And there goes all my money, but man, did we get some good stuff. You got some good yeah. stuff? And then I walked into the school bookstore. There went the money again. <laughs> oh, my word. Nice stuff. Any tutor rivets, stuff? No, rivet squeezers, uh, drills, uh, rivet guns. Holy moly. Nice hey, job. Man. Ronnie's on his fourth load. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> Every time we see Ronnie, Ronnie comes walking back. <laughs> Got another 50 bucks worth. <laughs> oh my lord. Empty their library. It's beautiful to watch. Uh, what's on the docket little, today? Uh, oh, sorry. A little Tim Hortons plug to this. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to show. Yeah, this is the advertisement. This is the Leatherman Wave. Oh, yeah. The official tool of plane savers. <laughs> Everywhere. Unofficial. Unofficial. <laughs> Great on. Uh, what's on docket for today? 
Well, safetying up the engines, we're, uh, I mean, all we needed to do was get stuff ready to run on the ground. We didn't have to put cotter pins in or, so now it's going through every little nook and cranny, making sure things are safe. Re tying up some lines, get to the tail, hopefully this afternoon, start putting tail feathers on. And uh, how far did Dusty get last night? Dusty got to Sudbury. Sudbury, Ontario. So bittersweet. We got the run in, but that, that means we, we lost our we lost our uh, our import from the farm team. <laughs> the farm team on. Okay, Bobby, what are you looking forward to today? Oh, tail cone, cone with uh, Benjamin. Are, so is this we're, a final? Yeah, we're finally going to reposition some holes and uh, do the final fit. We'd like to leave it off for now, just in, we don't want to damage it with a tow bar and stuff, getting the airplane in and out of the hangar. So once we fit it, we'll tag it, it'll be fine. So ready to go. She's recording. So Fred got a letter from Transport Canada, which normally is not the best thing in the world, uh, but I have a feeling uh, it is going to be nice. What is this? Wow. Official microfilm? This looks like drawings of some sort. Wow, these are from Transport Canada? Yes, sir. What is, oh, look, DATD avionics refit. Look at this. Thank you again, Transport Canada. So, Fred, what is this all about? This is a friend who's, who's working at Transport Canada in um, Moncton. Mr. Yan Pichal. <laughs> <laughs> so he put us in contact with somebody in Ottawa. And these are the original drawings of DTD for the wiring diagrams uh -huh. modifications. It's just amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's wonderful. That is so cool. Do we have a machine that could read these? Yes, we do. At the school. At the school. At the school that has everything. Unbelievable, eh? So, uh, speaking of the school that has everything, um, I want to take this opportunity to show you guys a little bit more about the school uh, while we're taking a big breather from the big uh, events of yesterday. Um, so, I want to show you guys, they have uh, amazing um, students, because there is no school without students, and uh, students like uh, Benjamin and um, William, who I've been kind of picking on in the videos, uh, are being really important and uh, I want to show you guys their social club and then uh, I want to show you a couple of American students uh, that are here uh, to give you guys an insight for all of our American and international fans of how you can join the school and remember folks the school's not asked me to do this I've actually requested this um, to show you guys so this is my gift to you guys from the school for us because we're in the hangar and you can't put a price on uh, this how awesome the school is. So let's go and I'll introduce you to the students. Okay, so we got a couple students here. I know one of the big questions everyone's been asking uh, is how how could somebody actually come to the school? So we've been you know looking around the school, seeing how awesome it is, and uh, but how can you as a viewer uh, possibly come to the school? So we found a couple students here uh, that uh, went to high school in the states and actually are American citizens that are here, so I thought that would probably be the most um, useful knowledge to talk to somebody uh, that has came into the system. So, um, yeah, what, uh, introduce yourselves. I'm Aaron Lombroso. I'm Michael Devis. And uh, what program are you guys in? Uh, we're in um, AME program, just yeah. studying to become uh, an aircraft maintenance engineer. Yeah. Cool, so how, how did you hear the school? Uh, I uh, was interested in aviation and I really liked uh, going on flights and flying and I wanted to know the deeper details of how things work and I looked up on, uh, just googled it and came up with Transport Canada and I went down the list and it turns out that uh, right here in St. Hubert we have the largest uh, CJEP, uh, largest college program in the world uh, for uh, aircraft maintenance engineers. So where did you come from to get here? Uh, I went to high school in Dallas, Texas and I was there for the full American high school grade 9 to grade 12 and I decided to come here and do my uh, college education here and get my maintenance degree. Sounds good. And introduce yourself. Hey, Michael Devis. Okay. Just did. Uh, yeah, so originally um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, well, I'm from the States, uh, born in the States and went to high school in the States. 
And uh, following that, I did uh, one semester of university in Virginia. Uh, I'm from Fairfax, Virginia, uh, kind of near the Washington, D.C. area. And uh, after that um, one semester, I just accumulated a lot of debt. So I figured, okay, I'll take a little break here, work. And um, I moved to Canada with uh, my dad. And uh, we sort of found the school by accident, actually. So it was just, uh, we saw in the paper there was a... Uh, an open house, so we went, checked it out, and I thought, like, like look at this place, it's awesome. And it's, yeah, like you said, uh, the biggest um, the biggest aircraft school in the world now, yeah. So I thought it was really awesome. And um, I'm finishing this year, uh, this is my last year. I'm currently working in the industry. I'm at Lockheed Martin right now, uh, Lockheed Martin Canada at the airport. And um, I've always been like a hands-on kind of person, so I've been like, the, I work on my car a lot. I actually converted my car from gas to fully electric drive. I wanted to plug that in. And I brought it here too, if you want to see it later. So can you explain how the shifting works? Just like a normal transmission, I mean, it's still the original transmission. I've got the original clutch in there as well, and the electric motor is just bolted onto the flywheel. So it's gonna spin away like crazy. <laughs> I'll try to slow that down here. But it works exactly the same way as it always has. It's just uh, the engine would idle, so it would constantly be separate, but uh, same way, basically. And I don't know how to explain it, it's just then it's sort of stock. <laughs> just with an electric motor instead of a gas engine. And uh, yeah, so this school has been absolutely phenomenal for me. And it's actually not that bad as a US citizen to come to Canada and do all this. Oh, that's great. So now we have the expert here. <laughs> so a couple guys came in, they found the school. How do people that are watching this find the school? Yeah, like these two guys, we have more and more uh, international school students coming here at the school. It's really simple. First, I recommend to go on the, our website. Uh, on uh, the, the, the NAS website and then they will see all the procedure is really simple. They have to apply to a, a regional um, service uh, website. Uh, they follow the steps. Basically, it's an evaluative uh, comparison that's done. Uh, they just look at their uh, academic files and see if they have their prerequisites. Mainly, we look at the, if the students have uh, has done some uh, courses in mathematics and physics. We compare the level and um, we evaluate the academic files and then uh, we give them an answer a few, a few weeks after. And if they, they decide to come, it's um, around 6,000 US dollars a semester. It's two semesters a year, and it's a three years program. So there are a lot of opportunities for them. And we see a lot of people coming from uh, Europe, North Africa, Asia more and more, and Africa. So, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more students from uh, the US too, so yeah. What kind of other stuff goes on in the school that you like uh, after hour stuff or, or extracurricular? Um, there are plenty of clubs in the school that do extracurricular activities. Hey folks, uh, Lori again and uh, my Benjamin. friend Benjamin. Uh, we're both volunteers on the, the DC3 and we're, we're going to show you the, the, the clubs that we have here in school uh, uh, of extracurricular uh, activities here. Uh, so let's start. Here um, we had last year uh, this contest, uh, two of our, of our, well one teacher of the school and one student had the chance to participate to a, uh, a race uh, which is called the Air Race Classic. It's a race uh, through uh, United States where they have to start from uh, this place and go up that way and it's a race pretty much they have to stop for fuel, they have to stop for maintenance and a lot of girls and yeah it's, it's, it's only for women and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, in fact, this race is a bit linked with World War II. I think it's uh, the path that women took uh, during World War II to get from uh, Texas uh, with the, pl the new planes that were built there uh, to uh, the most uh, northern eastern state in the US. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so oh, hey, I'm Mikey. Nice to meet you. You're the one that did the, the trip? Yes, I see your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, they, they were pretty proud. Uh, you finished uh, on the line? How, how I was 12 out of 50. 12 out of 50? Wow. Yep. And it's the first time we participated. That's crazy. 
So now here we have the Aero Club. Oh uh, yes. It's linked to the the Eric the Aries Classic, and here we have Lionel and uh, <laughs> other That's volunteers. William. William. All right. Oh. So this is the best club of uh, Ecole Nationale d'Aérotechnique, the Aero Club. <laughs> so we have uh, our little branding set. But basically, what do we do here? Uh, we provide uh, flights uh, for uh, the technician who wants to be who possess a, a private pilot license. So whenever they work on an airplane to fix something, they can uh, actually uh, take a ride with the, this aircraft and then uh, raise their their hours, flight hours, in order to become a pilot if they want. And William? Yeah. We all remember William from the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So William, uh, as soon as you're done here, we'll uh, we'll probably need you back. <laughs> Perfect. I'll be there. I'll come with you. <laughs> here we have Iron Man uh, and Jason, another volunteer. Oh, Jason! The <laughs> so if you haven't noticed yet, I am a student at Ecole Nationale Aérotechnique in the English program, and I am part of also the Aeromodelisme Aircraft Modeling Club. But this is basically a club. Uh, that we, we kind of master the RC world, radio controlled stuff, and uh, recently, these past two semesters, we've had a big project going on. Um, as you can see here, we've got these amazing 3D views. Um, this is all modeled in Katia, which is a 3D modeling program. Um, and as you can see, the model is starting to come together. It's still a work in progress. We're not done yet. Um, we've had amazing support. We've had sponsorships. We work on this night and day. And uh, as you can tell, this is all a hot wire cut. Therefore, it's a working technique that you might not know, but it might be used in the industry when you're working with composites, you might start hot wire cutting foam. Um, and so you, you start studying things like uh, wing sweep. My buddy who designed it initially had a huge wing sweep on it and I told him, well, you're gonna land at an incredible speed because the more sweep you have, the more, the higher your stall speed is and that's not that great, you know? So, you know, just going through the design and going through the, the, the group process of being able to come up with the best design possible to have the best result possible. Part of this oh, so as you get that, three phase, brushless. Therefore, this thing can go underwater anytime and nothing to worry about. <laughs> that literally, um, these ones will produce uh, eight, nine pounds of thrust, and this is 100% electric. Uh, potential RPM of these motors are typically around 80,000 for an electric motor. So, put that in your Tesla. So we, we've seen we've seen the Baja. Before, how are you guys doing? I'm fine, and you, uh, Mikey? Oh, we're doing pretty good. When's the next race? Uh, the next race will be in uh, October, October or November yeah. with uh, Midnight Mayhem. So basically, it's a four hours uh, race in, uh, in, the, in night. the night. So uh, it, it's ending at uh, midnight. So I already know that this is this, the, the new frame you guys have been working on. Yeah, it's the uh, black you frame. See it on a, oh, yeah. A yeah, our picture here. And this is the frame, we have a suspension part, uh, front and rear, and we can see here uh, our uh, custom... Uh, steering wrap. Oh, steering wrap, right So here. this is 100% besides the engine <laughs> and some of the, the uh, suspension yeah, components? Suspension, uh, brakes, we've got master cylinder and all that. But, yeah, but the design? The, yeah, the all design the is, already, is all done by a student. So uh, good luck, Mikey, with the uh, Baja, with the, <laughs> with the DC3 and everything. Uh, it's a beautiful project that you got, and uh, hopefully we'll see it at the uh, Aero Salon. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what do we got here? Drones? Ah, yeah, we've uh, got drones. <laughs> so basically what we do here is uh, we're building uh, this prototype that we already done. Uh, we've made it fly about two times. Um, this is really the prototype because at the end we're going to make this thing fly, oh, wow. uh, which is going to be like a third of the weight of this one. This, um, is, this um. is about five pounds. And with all the stock, it's going to be maybe like 9 pounds, but this one with everything is 20 pounds. Uh, everything here is made by the students, so this frame is made uh, by classes that we have uh, in our school. And after, our group is responsible for putting like all the engines, all the wire and everything, so it can actually uh, fly the frame. Uh, those are the two students oh. 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 So we are the club Avion Cargo. What we're doing, we're uh, participating in a competition. Where we have to, where we have to carry the highest weight as possible, the, the biggest weight as possible, and passengers. So for that, we have to build a, a big plane. Uh, our our engine it, it is limited to 1,000 watts, and our wingspan to uh, 12 feet. 
So this is what we, we did. We designed it here at school and we also built it and made it fly in California for the competition. And we ended up being uh, 6 out of 37. Oh wow, so the, the weight is gone by uh, tennis balls? Yeah, yeah, tennis balls and uh, uh, a payload here, plate. and it's just steel. So basically, 100% designed in-house a freight hauler. Now this is now near and dear to my heart now. Uh, you know, designing, manufacturing, and building an aircraft to haul as much freight as possible, that is very, very cool. Yeah, so I'm playing designers. <laughs> so hopefully see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys can figure out how to put more weight in the DC-3. It'll be real good. <laughs> Hello, folks. <laughs> so um, I'm presenting you the uh, student council. So all the clubs you, you've seen before or later in the, the video, um, we are pretty much the, the, the group who uh, give the money, who organize all the stuff around it. So uh, we, do, uh, we do activities, we, we offer prizes for, uh, for involvement. Uh, we do uh, all sort of stuff for, um, for uh, people to stay in their studies and have fun. And uh, I'm part of it. I was the one uh, responsible for those uh, posters. And uh, it's, it's really fun because uh, you, you don't do any technical work, but you, you learn uh, how to uh, how to uh, organize stuff and how to uh, do gestion in general. And so it's, uh, it's an awesome club. That's, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of it, yeah. Oh, right on. Oh, you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're the best club here So in that's the yeah. last club of uh, today. That's the Equinox, Equinox Club, and uh, they do all sorts of activities during winter, uh, spring, during fall too. Yeah. So they present the, <laughs> the climbing wall here. The climbing wall yeah. too. Oh, yeah. so they're the guys who uh, use it. So there you go, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're an outdoors club, we go camping, we go rock climbing. John, how far, how high can you get? Uh, not me. <laughs> not me. Me, I will stay on the ground. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye -bye. And now I feel guilty because look, after I videotape, everybody's now packing up. So thank you to all the, the social clubs uh, for sticking around and letting me film you guys. Uh, very, very awesome. Thank you guys. Holy smokes. Fred? This is the machine. What kind of computer is this? This device is used to disappear some microfish. <laughs> so if you're working for oh. the FBI or any kind of uh, oh, institution cannon. like this, you've got this beautiful new technology. <laughs> no hacker can hack this machine. <laughs> it's pirate proof. So uh, it's the future, basically. Well, it's, a, it's the 70 model too, which is nice. Yeah, it's I heard there was a little buggy. The 60 was a little buggy, so. Yeah, yeah, but they <laughs> updated the software inside, and this is it. This is awesome. I have no clue how this would even come the, close to working. Uh, Let's plug her in. Or we can use a bike, you know, and uh, <laughs> we'll see if it works. I still don't know. 1984. See the cover? Oh. 60th anniversary. Arrow. Stubby Molson Pleasure Pack. And VJ Teens. And look. <gasps> Whoa. Which one is that? To get the magnifying glass up. It was at Trenton. 1959, February the 2. Printer micro fiche machine. Yeah, don't, don't laugh. Now we're going back in time. Coming out of the galaxy. This is the micro fish reader. Wow. Hello, David Saint Jacques. David Saint Jacques, are you there? Are you there? Microfish going on the slide. Oh, backward. <laughs> transponder. Do you need a transponder? 
CF DTD transponder installation. We're gonna have to spend some time analysis to analyze this, what we have here. But for me, it's that's treasure. It's really a treasure, and we cannot oh. keep it, eh? So uh, we have to send it back. Back to the archives. Yeah. Yeah. Can we like zoom it out and print it out? I I don't want to touch the printer just in case it stuck somewhere. You, you can see something happened here. We don't have this the, the entire display. DC three. DC three. John F. Kennedy gave a DC three to Mabuto. If, if it's still there. Back in the day, and it's Mabuto's not there, but the DC three still is. Fred, what's happening? It's just great. Uh, in the microfish sent by uh, Yves Rivet from Transport Canada, there's, believe it or not, the Omega system installation. And, you know, that's, that's Cold War history. So this aircraft was probably equipped with an antenna that can receive the, the navigation position uh, through that antenna. And honestly, I don't know this system. It's just disappeared. It was a huge investment to get that worldwide coverage. And uh, there were big antenna uh, working with uh, low frequency. And that's really Cold War stuff. <laughs> so that's really DTD. So this is actually for this airplane. Exactly. So as far as I understand the drawings, they should have a big cable starting from the top of the vertical and going to the, probably another mast in the front of the aircraft. Because if it was low frequency, we needed an, a long antenna. So you had an HF radio with the same kind of cable. You had ADF sense antenna with other cables and that Omega system. And that would explain a couple of things that we find on the aircraft. That's that's quite interesting and those two bubbles on top of the aircraft were probably the ADF loop antennas so honestly it's a jump in history history of aviation is just printed like a tattoo on this aircraft it's amazing it's really amazing big thanks to Fred who's uh, going through the micro fish, micro fish uh, and the Omega system um, that is something that sounds very neat. So any viewers out there that know anything about the Omega uh, radio system, uh, let us know in the comments. That might be something cool. Piece of history we would have never known if it wasn't for uh, some microfish uh, sent to us by some awesome people at Transport Canada. Again, Transport Canada is being just absolutely amazing and uh, I can't thank them enough. Pretty much every department's been helping us out. Stella, what's happening? Huh? What's happening? Oh, the skin is in the section. Sounds good. It's looking good. Bobby, how was your day? Very good. Fixed my wing uh, boot strip. We ordered some more uh, nut or plates. Some more nut plates. From Aviol? From Aviol, our friends at Aviol. Bobby looks like he's standing in a west wind there. <laughs> he's leaning and hair stuck out to the side. Oh, is that he's been, again? He's been in the wind. So we never got to the tail today. Ronnie and Jay working on the engines here and making sure the lines are all good and building some new lines, shortening some lines, putting fire sleeve on the lines, laying it all on the line. Right on, right on. So tomorrow, Ronnie, we're gonna go get some tail feathers. Yeah, we'll bring them all over tomorrow from the other side. Yeah. Uh, we'll bring them. We'll bring the elevators over and yep, and the rudder and start. Putting the tail together. And then by what's tomorrow? Thursday? Um, by Sunday we'll have them on. Tomorrow's Sounds good. By Sunday noon. What you working on? I'm just fixing some uh, hoses for uh, finalizing. Well, folks, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I hope you liked it. Today was 
a nice zen-like day. Uh, I got to you know hang out with some students, which is always awesome. And really, uh, the school again, folks. No lie, not a commercial. Again, I was never told to do any of this stuff. I just want to really highlight and show the world what a treasure is sitting here in uh, the heart of Quebec. So uh, that being said, all the links for the school are at the very bottom of the description. All the social medias, websites and everything. So if you want to learn more, check it all out. I'll keep it on, very, on every single video. So it's there and yeah, thank you for watching today. Today's nice long episode. Hopefully you had a relaxing day just like us and uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye.